Good afternoon. I'm Dan with Four Winds Ancestral Skills. Today I'll be going over how to eat an acorn. We've got a lot to cover, so stick around. Well, it's fall here in the Ozarks. Leaves are changing colors. The air is a little bit cooler. You don't have to worry about sweating to death when you walk outside like it was just a couple months ago. And the bugs are starting to diminish, which is always a great thing. Anyway, another great thing that happens is the nuts fall off the tree. These here happen to be acorns. There's a number of different nuts in this region, but acorns are one of my favorites, but they do require a bit of processing to eat. Now, pretty much wherever you live in the U.S., there's generally some type of oak tree that'll grow there and produce acorns. There's a number of different types of acorns, even here in the Ozarks. Uh, red oaks, white oaks are kind of some major ones we have out here, but they even hybridize between each other. So you get kind of a mixed bag. All or acorns will process more or less the same. The, a lot of times certain varieties like red oaks will have more tannins that have to be leased. They need to be processed a little bit longer, but for the most part the processing is the same. Go over a quick identification real quick. The leaf looks similar to this. There's a lot of different variations between the, the like I said the varying types and even the hybrid types of oak trees that produce these acorns. A lot of times they'll have more of a rounded shape on the leaf and the leaves can be bigger or smaller depending on the tree and where they're at. So just keep that in mind. The leaves have a lot of variation but actually so do the nuts. Different variations of oak trees produce different varieties of nuts but they all look fairly similar. They all have this distinctive acorn shape. A little bit of an example there. Now if you're interested in doing some foraging for acorns, of course you get out there, it doesn't take a lot of equipment. Get out there, find an oak tree, find some acorns laying on the ground, start just gathering them up in a bucket or some kind of container that you have. They do make a little it's almost like an egg beater except it's in a wheel format that you can wheel around underneath an oak tree and it picks up tons of acorns unfortunately it picks up everything including a, some rocks or whatever happens to be out there so what I personally like to do is just grab them one by one see an a, see a uh, acorn throw in the bucket you can kind of sort out the bad ones uh, fairly quickly that way you pick it up and it's just rotten or it's got a hole in it something obvious like that you can just toss it without even doing a second thought that way you don't have to take it home and then toss it later now when you're gathering the the acorns up you want to look like I said and kind of sort if they have any holes in them if they're rotted if they look like they have problems with them if they have caps on things like that just discard those if they're really small immature and they're off the tree then same thing just discard those save your time you don't want to be cracking open a bunch of acorns and you know half of them are bad another way to do that is actually with some water if you have a little bucket or jar like this or something you can just take water and dump the acorns in there and as you can see this one here it's floating and the rest of them sink that is one way to kind of quickly sort them if you dump them in there and they float they're not good if they sink those are more likely to be good I won't say they're all good because you never know but the the ones that sink are the ones you're looking for another thing you need to, to look out for is these little caps if you pick up an acorn and it has a little cap on it has that kind of stereotypical little cap. That's a bad acorn. The tree basically ejected it before it was matured. For whatever reason, there's a problem with it. There could be a worm in there or rotted inside. But for whatever reason, the tree ejected it before it was done. So after you've gone out and gathered whatever acorns you need, you do have to process them. Some nuts have rather thick shells. The acorns, not really. They have a fairly thin shell. You crack this open, and you'll actually get this nut meat that's in there. So the shell isn't too big of an issue. I'll uh, come over here and show you real quick how I generally crack them open. But you want to get that nut meat out and then you have to leach it. There's tannins in there which will 
they won't they're not poisonous where they'll like kill you or something but they will kind of make you sick if you just were to take the the raw nuts and just eat them as they are they would probably give you a stomach ache and maybe some diarrhea but you can leach those tannins out and still be able to utilize that nut now once you've gone through and sorted out the bad nuts there's probably a million different ways to, to crack a nut. One of my preferred ways, especially if I'm out in the field at all, is just a piece of wood and a stone. So what I like to do is take the acorn that I'm gonna use, and there's kind of a little pointy nub on the end. I put that down on the, the piece of wood, and I take the stone, and I just crack it like that. And then it just pops open. And like I said, the certain varieties of acorns are a little bit harder to shell, but in reality, these are fairly easy nuts to crack. They're not generally that difficult, and you can get to the nut meat inside. So I just do that again and again. Crack them open. And there they are. That's how you get to the nut meat. You can also, if you have the varieties of acorns that do have a little bit harder shell, you can whack them a little bit harder. And if they do, if the, the nut meat crunches down more than they, these are more or less whole. If the nut meat crunches down, it's not that big of a deal. Um, generally, I will mash these up into a, a uh, flour anyway so it's not that big of a deal if you kind of crush the the meat of it okay once you have your nut meat uh, exposed the shell off you just want to crush these up a little bit you don't have to necessarily crush them into a fine flour or anything if you don't want to but it is good to crush them to smaller pieces than just halves essentially that'll help the leaching process go a lot quicker like i said i just take a rock you mash them. Uh, one thing, when you are mashing them, these little uh, skins essentially will come off, kind of like almost like a peanut. These skins you just want to discard because they're actually high in tannins, so it'll take a while, it'll take longer to leach if you leave those in the mix. Generally, when you throw this in the, the water, they will kind of float to the top anyway. So you can just kind of skim those off, but uh, don't spend a lot of time trying to pick out every little piece of the, the skin that's on the nut. It's not that big of a deal, but if you get a big piece like that, just just know that you want to discard that if, if it's easy. Now you mash it up to the level that you're looking for here. You can use a food processor if that's a little easier for you. You can do a lot more same amount of time. But either way, once you're all done, Grinding it up. The next step is to leach it. There's two different ways of leaching. There's hot leaching and cold leaching. The acorn flour or pieces that you've ground up here. You put that in a container full of water and you refresh the water every twice a day or so. That's usually what I do. And depending on the type of acorn, it could take a week, sometimes two, but usually like a week or so but you essentially fill it up let it soak and then pour the water off twice a day fill it back up it should always be soaking through the day now these little pieces here like when you're first grinding them up if you try them they're, ha they're gonna have kind of a bitter unpleasant taste I'll just say that if you were to just eat it like as is right here after you leach them they that will go away you want to have a kind of a bland, a little bit of a nutty flavor to your, your acorns. That's kind of what you're looking for. If it's any bitterness at all, it will come through in the food. Like I said before, I'm gonna do a cold leaching method. That's kind of the preferred way to do it. It just takes a little bit longer. You just fill this up with water. Like I mentioned, those skins 
generally float to the top. So what you can do is when they when they do that, just essentially pour them off. You can just pouring the skins off, and that'll help your your mixture here leach faster. Uh, an alternative method to the cold method would be uh, putting it in like, say, a sock, something like that, and putting it in a, into a river. I've also heard about it, having it in a stocking and putting it in the back of a toilet. So every time the toilet flushes, the water flushes down the toilet and then it refills with fresh water. I, I've done the river method. I haven't done the toilet method. It should be clean water, but I've never tried it. So if anybody out there wants to... Tell me how it works for them, let me know. All right, now I'll touch real quick on the hot water process of leaching. It's similar to the cold water process, except you're using boiling water. Add the mixture to hot water, boiling water, and then pour it off. Let it sit there, minute, boil, pour that off. And continue doing that until there's no bitterness left in it. Same thing like when you do it this way. You taste a little bit. If it tastes kind of like I said, bland and nutty, and that's all that is, that's kind of what you're looking for. Now once you've gotten done leaching this, whether you use the hot method or the cold method, you're going to need to take this uh, slurry, essentially, uh, pour the excess water off, and then take what I, what's left here, the slurry down at the bottom, put it on like a flat cookie sheet, a tarp, a piece of wood, something clean, obviously, and let that stuff dry out. If you're at home, you can put on a cookie sheet, put it in the oven, leave the oven door open just a little bit, and put it on like your lowest setting in your oven, and that'll help cycle the, keep it warm and cycle the air through and help dry it out. If you're out here in the wilderness, like I said, put it on a tarp, a board, anything that's fairly clean and somewhere safe from animals getting in there and messing with it. Once it's all dried out, it should look something similar to this. Just a flower. Uh, this is all dried out, and of course this is ground down pretty fine, so it's good for ash cakes, or essentially using like almond flour or coconut flour. You can kind of use it along the same lines. Much like almond and coconut flour, it's a lot more filling than wheat flour, and it's lower in carb, higher in fat. So it's uh, a healthy alternative if you're looking for something other than wheat. But that's pretty much it. You, main thing, you have to leach it and then dry it out but other than that it's not terribly difficult to make a decent amount of this stuff like i said the the forests especially in this part of the country are filled with acorns just waiting for waiting for somebody to go through and harvest them so i hope this video helps i hope you learned a lot and hope you'll get out there and try some acorn flour it's not terribly difficult to make so give it a try let me know how you like it you can always reach out to me if you have any comments, questions, anything like that. Uh, I'm fourwindsancestral at gmail.com. And my website is fourwindsancestralskills.com. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. Anyway, I'm Dan for Four Winds Ancestral Skills. I'll see you out on the trail. Take care.